Welcome back to the holodeck training program, Lieutenant Monroe. Although I am quite confident in your abilities, Starfleet regulations specifically state that all personnel are to undergo fitness and combat readiness training at least once per Earth year. It is now time to begin your training. Are you ready to proceed? I'm ready. These exercises are designed to enhance your skills, Lieutenant. Very good. Let us begin the exercises. Jumping plays a key role in maneuvering around your environment, Lieutenant. Successful maneuvering is the first and most important step to your survival. A jump is executed by pressing the jump excellent. Let's go on. Crouching and walking allow you to access areas that would otherwise be too small for you to maneuver in, such as a duct or a Jeffrey's tube. A mission success or failure may hinge on your ability to move effectively through tight spaces. Very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. both your crouching and jumping skills to clear the following obstacles. Proce Excellent work. To climb a ladder, look up while pressing the forward movement key. Excellent. Notice that some obstacles are too high for a standard jump. To clear obstacles such as these, you will need to execute a crouch jump. This is done by pressing and holding the jump key, and then pressing the crouch key while in the air for more vertical momentum. This will allow you to clear taller objects. Utilize both the standard and crouch jump to navigate these obstacles, and advance to the next exercise.
excellent work. At the end of the corridor, you will see a maintenance door leading to a Jeffrey's tube. As you approach the maintenance door, execute a crouch walk to enter the tube. Once inside, follow the tube down the ladder to the maintenance door below. We will continue with the second set of examinations when you complete this exercise. Excellent, Lieutenant. Your performance was satisfactory. If you are ready, we will begin the second examination. On your missions, you will encounter occasions where jumping will require both distance and precision. In a situation like this, a miscalculated step will often end in injury or death. For this exercise, jump across... Very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. It is unfortunate, but you can expect to be injured on away missions. Jump or run off this ledge to the floor below. Notice the change in your health status. While your hazard suit is designed to help absorb the shock of an impact, a fall from too great a height will end in injury or death. As I am sure you remember, your hazard suit provides a great deal of tactical assistance. For example, it continuously monitors your life signs, feeding that information to your tactical eye display, or TED. This data can be seen in the excellent work, Lieutenant. Your progress is acceptable. Many of the doors in your environment will open automatically as you approach. However, some doors, such as the one with the damaged operations panel, are malfunctioning and will not open. Some doors can open, but are locked. A door's locked status can be ascertained by looking for a red or green indicator light, most often found above the door itself. You will notice the light on the functioning door is red, meaning it is currently locked and will not open. If you look around, you should be able to find a switch nearby. Walk to the switch and press your use key.
Well done. Notice the indicator light is now green, confirming that the door is unlocked. Excellent work. To operate a lift, move to its operations panel and press your use key. Excellent. Interacting with your world is vital to your success and survival. You have already seen where interaction can operate a door, activate a lift, or draw energy from a tunnel. Excellent. Notice how using the panel activated the bridge. Interacting with the environment will often allow you to continue when there seems to be no other way to progress. Now, Lieutenant. Like your hazard suit, your tricorder also has an interface to your tactical eye display. Approach one of the crystal deposits. Use your tricorder key to activate your tricorder. Notice that once your tricorder is active, an identification overlay appears around the deposit in your TED. Now aim your tricorder at the crystal deposit and press and hold the fire button. This will activate your tricorder's scanning functionality and provide you with additional information about the object. Excellent work, Lieutenant. When active, your tricorder also feeds tactical data to your TED. Data from the tricorder's angular proximity discriminator is represented in the upper right corner of your display. Now, note the green resonance beacon. That beacon represents my location in your environment. Watch the beacon as I move about the environment. Notice how it moves to track my relative location. The angular proximity discriminator provides a unique resonance beacon for most object types. For example, non-hostile life forms are marked with a green beacon, while hostile or aggressive ones are red. Additionally, the discriminator will denote your mission objectives with a gold circle to signify their importance. Please proceed through the archway to the next exercise. Tactical eye display is capable of artificially boosting the gain levels in all photonic registers. This allows you some degree of night vision. For this exercise, use your night vision key to activate the night vision mode. Then navigate through this cave to the exit on the other side. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Now, Lieutenant, we will recertify you on advanced tricorder mechanics. Activate your tricorder and move to the nearby console marked with an identification overlay in your TED. Modulate the console. Satisfactory work, Lieutenant. On simple consoles like this one, your tricorder will be able to modulate the necessary carrier wave itself. Activate your phaser by pressing the weapon group key your tricorder will lower and your phaser should be readied. Notice the red force field impeding your progress. To disable the force field. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Through its interface with your TED, your tricorder provides you with additional view modes. Activate your tricorder and press the alternate fire button. 
notice how your view changes. Your tricorder is now feeding information on the nearby objects directly to your TED. In this view mode, you see stress fractures and structural weaknesses that would normally go unnoticed. Note that objects with structural flaws are often susceptible to weapons fire. A satisfactory performance, Lieutenant. Let's move on to the weapons examination. Now, Lieutenant, your records indicate that you need to recertify on both the standard Federation phaser and the compression rifle. We'll begin with the phaser. For this exercise, use your phaser to destroy as many practice targets as you can. You may use either primary or alternate fire, but you must continue the exercise until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. Good luck. Excellent. We will now repeat the exercise for the compression rifle. As with your phaser, you may use either primary or secondary fire. However, you must continue until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. Exemplary work, Lieutenant. You have now successfully completed the training exercises. You are fit for active duty as a member of the hazard team. Thank you. On star date four eight three one. The Borg will not attack you until you prove. Kelsia here. I'm scouting out the generator. Good. Keep me posted. Uh, Monroe, where are you?
Here's another one. Monroe, over here! I can't modulate this yellow force field from here. Use your tricorder on that control panel. Could you use your tricorder on that control panel? It's on the wall beside the yellow force field. The force field's down. Thanks. just went down. Excellent work. Let's find Telsia. There's Voyager. Trapped. I wish I was back there, recalibrating antimatter containment fields. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. They're active. Use iMods. The Borg can't adapt to them. Resistance is futile. Must be jamming them. Make that. 
Cyborg to Chang. Beam him out. His signal is too weak. Find him and eliminate nearby sources of interference, possibly force fields. Understood. Chell, locate Chang. I've sent his location to your tricorder. He's in a maturation chamber for assimilation. Tell to Monroe. I found a Borg relay node. Accessing their computer system. Good. The Borg took Chang. We'll find you after he's safe. Chang is below us, but the only lift control panel is up here. Stay here and operate the lift. I'll get Chang. Didn't I order you to stay close? Get out! Negative. I'm shutting this force field down. Don't go anywhere.
Monroe, there's a force field up here we'll need to get through. My scans indicate the power source is on your level. You're too late. Chang's been assimilated. His signal is too weak. Find him and eliminate nearby sources of interference, possibly force fields. Understood. Gel, locate Chang. I've sent his location to your tricorder. He's in a maturation chamber for assimilation. Tells you to Monroe. I found a Borg relay node. Accessing their computer system. Good. The Borg took Chang. We'll find you after he's safe. Chang is below us, but the only lift control panel is up here. Stay here and operate the lift. I'll get Chang. Resistance is futile. field up here we'll need to get through. My scans indicate the power source is on your level.
that knocked out the force field up here. Okay, Chell. Yes, sir. Ensign Chang is safe. Locate Ensign Murphy and complete your primary objective. Nice job, Monroe. Let's go find Telsia.